In this video, I want to give you a really good understanding of the different attributes we can utilize to sort through the photos in our Lightroom Classic catalog and the different paths you might take as a photographer to be able to utilize these effectively to get you where you want to go in a set of images really quickly. So first of all, where are these attributes located on your screen? So we're going to be in the library module today and across the top of the library module is a set of attributes. This set of attributes is also repeated down here in the bottom um, right above the thumbnails. Now I have a tendency to use the one at the top. Other people use the one at the bottom. It really doesn't matter. If you see the one, if you don't see the one at the top, you can turn it on under view and show filter bar and that will make this one at the top appear. Now I'm gonna use that one in our demonstration today, but know the exact same things are available down here along the bottom. And if you wanna keep this closed to save for um, real estate on your catalog screen, then by all means use the bottom filter bar as well. So it doesn't matter, both are the same and they'll coordinate with each other. The first thing to know is that when we get into filtering images, we need to understand that what set of images that we have displayed are the set of images that are going to be filtered. So in this case, I have all my photographs displayed. And so when I filter, it's going to filter my entire catalog. If I scroll down and I were to just go into this dry head to show folder, then it would only use those 320 images to be able to filter through. So you need to be wise about what you choose on that left hand side of your menu in Lightroom Classic as the set of images that you're going to work with with these particular filters. So let's start from left to right to understand what these filters are and what they do. So the first set of filters are your flags. These are allow you to pick, reject, or remain neutral on an image. Now you'll see there are a bunch of images on our screen right here that have a white flag on them. If I were to click on one of these images and tap X, I could set that image as rejected and you will see a black flag with an X in it. That shows that image as a rejected image. Now the cool thing about this is later on you can sort down to just your rejected images and you can remove them from your catalog. It is a very effective way to use pick and reject to be able to sort through images when you import them from a card to see which ones you want to work with and which which ones just really need to go in the trash can because of some reason or another. You know those beautiful photos you might take of your feet or the inside of the truck while you're driving between shoots. Those are all great images for the reject pile. Okay, so P is pick, X is reject, and all photos when they enter your catalog are the neutral or middle flag. So you can use this to sort down to look at just the picked images, just the rejected images, or the images that you just haven't made a decision on yet. All right, moving over to our next set of, of attributes are edits. So you can sort to the images that have been edited and you can easily recognize these images because they'll have, if you have it turned on, they'll have these little icons on them that show what has been altered for that specific image. So in this case, four different attributes or four different parts of that image have been altered. And in this one, there have been five. Um, this I believe is keywords. Uh, this is um, light and dark. This image has also been cropped. Um, so it shows us what has been done to that image. But if you're editing along and you want to see the full set of images that you've edited, you can click here. Probably what I find more useful is using the not edited <laughs> um, image selection in the attributes. So this lets me see just images in this particular set of images that I haven't done any edits to. That's super handy if I get all excited and I import a bunch of images into my catalog and then I get into editing a few at a time and now I've got 200 images in there and I've edited 50 and now I gotta go back through the catalog and figure out or that set of images and figure out 
which images I haven't edited. This lets me do it with the click of a button. Then they're up there and I can start to work on them. The next set of attributes is the star ratings. Now I have met a lot of photographers who use Lightroom and I swear everybody has a little bit of a subtle difference as to what these star ratings mean. So in my world, one star images are images that I think are passable. So for me, the one star is like the pick flag. Um, I actually find the pick flag easier, but I started with the stars first and that tends to be the system that I fall back on when I get in a hurry in editing. So when I'm going through images, I'll just tap that one key on my keyboard, which is the keyboard shortcut for the one star. And that tells me what images that I wanna go back and take a look a second look at. Um, and then two through four stars just kind of randomly means different things. And then five star images are images that I want to use um, on my website or want to feature somewhere. So those star images, like I said, every photographer I meet who uses Lightroom has a little different way of using those particular star ratings. Um, each star correlates to a key on your keyboard, one through five, and you can sort them, you can sort images by star by being greater than or equal to, less than or equal to, or equal to the number of stars. So you just simply choose one of these three items and then choose whatever set of stars that you want to take a look at. The next set is of, of ratings or attributes has to do with color. So we can also give our images a color label. Now, again, this is a place where Lightroom gets super customizable and pretty much every photographer that I speak to that uses color ratings has a little bit of a different system. Maybe blues mean that those are website images, reds mean that they're images for print, um, greens mean that they go to the clients, yellow means they go in the stock catalog. I mean, there can be a multitude of ways that you can use the color ratings. Each of the color ratings also associates to a number on your keyboard except for purple. <laughs> Poor purple gets stuck with having to being chosen via a click or some other way. I have another video that covers how to use the color ratings and how to set them up and ways to think about it and ways that you can customize them as well. But for this video, just know that the color ratings are there and that they're very usable. And as you're going through developing your Lightroom system and your Lightroom workflow, it's another option for you to utilize to be able to sort through your images or to designate certain images for certain purposes or certain actions. All right, going to our last little area here of, of being able to use attributes to sort, there is the original image. So this is the kind, the original image, virtual copies, or um, this final one is videos, it looks like. Okay, I don't ever use that one. So we're going to click off of that. So this one is original photos. And if you hesitate over these, you can tell um, what they are. So if you wanted to sort this down to just videos, you could. If you wanted to sort it down to just original images, you can. Or if you want to sort it down to virtual copies, you can do that as well. Now, mind you, all of these attributes will stack on each other. So you can pick... Um, if you want to sort your catalog even more detailed, you could say, I want all flagged photos that have edited, been edited with a one star rating and a color label of red and our original images. <laughs> so I've used that to sort down to these three images out of 865 images in this particular image set in this catalog. So it's a very handy way for you to be able to create sets of images really quickly and dig down in your workflow to get to where just exactly where you wanna go. The last thing I want to show you in this video is that once you've filtered a group of images, you can unfilter them or take these away by just simply clicking on them. So if you want to go back to all of the images, you can just simply come along here and unclick all of those things and it'll bring it back to your entire set of images once they're all done. It was kind of slow there for a moment because I forgot the red. So I'm going to go back and go ahead and pick all of that 
same set of images that I just had, because I want to show you one other little cool thing here. So underneath this custom filter area right here, you can click this and you can save um, your current settings as a new preset. So let's say this is something we want to do often. <laughs> we want to grab our one star edited photos with a white flag and a red label um, and that are originals, by the way. I can click save, save this and we're just going to call it test save. Um, whoops right there, click on create. And then under here, this little drop down menu, I will have test save left again. So next time I wanna come in here and sort through all of that, I don't even have to bother to click the buttons. I can just come here to custom filters and grab the ones that I want. There are some that are sort of pre-designated in here that uh, you get kind of out of the box with Lightroom and then others that come along with extras. So, and this will also, um, filter for the other areas of attributes such as text meta and metadata. In this case, I do have one that sorts down to the images that were shot with my R5 and the RF lens. So it's kind of cool to be able to do that and just pick images that were shot with that camera and that lens. And I have a saved um, little custom way of filtering just those. I kind of got a little off topic because that's a metadata sort and not an attribute um, filter, but I think you get the idea. This can expand a lot of the way that you work. The goal with Lightroom is to work smarter, not harder. And once you've done a search and you find yourself doing any type of a repetitive behavior, it's time to look for something in Lightroom to be able to save that repetitive behavior, either a custom setting or a preset of some sort that'll allow you to repeat that particular action without having to take all of the keystrokes that you had to get the first time you had to do it. All right, hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.